Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the OC Show. This is episode 14. Uh, here's Tim. My name's Peter. First I have first things first. Uh, once again, there is going to be a Q&A next Monday. Yeah, so next Monday, that's for us here in Taipei, but it's actually going to be on Sunday, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern time for the guys that are on the U.S. time zone. So in the live Q&A, we're going to have the chance uh, this week to receive Lucky Noob from Indonesia, who is the editor-in-chief of Jagat OC, and he's going to talk to us about what's the plan with Jagat OC in comparison to Jagat Review, where he, I think, still work anyway. And, uh, you know, like what's up with the Indonesian overclocking communities. So that should be pretty interesting. I've seen a lot of uh, new articles coming from JagatOC.com. Yeah. Uh, I'll try to make it as well. And, and sure. uh, I had some comments from uh, from the previous Q&A that my mon Monday morning mood wasn't as spectacular as my mood right now is. So I'll have about 15 Red Bulls before we do the before we do the recording on, on Monday. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so last time uh, in the last episode, we were talking about that already and we also mentioned it during the live Q&A last week. 0.0, uh, .0 who's an overclocker from Thailand, did some modding and some hacking on uh, laptops to be able to unlock it and overclock his Haswell mobile chips. So we did an interview with him. We talked about this already. So if you guys are interested to learn more about you know, how he did that, what's the whole process behind it, and how you could also replicate it eventually at home, um, check out the interview that is on HWBud. It's on the front page if I'm if it's not pushed down too much, so you guys can check it out and learn more about it. Speaking of hacking, which is a perfect segue into the new the next news item, uh, Tin from EVJ posted a guide on uh, on our forum and as well as on his own uh, personal page how to use the Raspberry Pi to control the EV bots. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone knows that the the, the EV bot, uh, sorry, the the ePower. So the ePower is the PWN module. The That's e the PCB part you yeah, soldered. The EV right? bot is a your, the name in that in that title is not entirely correct. Anyway, yeah. the EV bot is what you use to control the ePower, and the problem is that those EV bots are not widely available. Now, the ePower uses a very simple I two C interface to connect to the EV bot, and then uh, basically pro how how you program the ePower, and you can do that with your Raspberry Pi as well. Okay. He posted up the entire guide up on uh, on xdevs.com, so you don't have to research that much to get it working. So, point is, you don't need an EV bot anymore. No. And you can probably program it to do more than just that. Ah. Uh, Automated. Be creative. Adjustments. Possibly. OK, well, that's pretty good. On the other side of the testing part, uh, the guys from um, Overclocking Guides, so mainly I think Roman is behind this one, uh, they posted a review of 47 different thermal pastes. So they went through 47 thermal pastes to apply them, test them, measure. So they have a whole system where they can actually measure the, the conductance of the um, temperature over time and how the pace reacts to extreme conditions. So if you're interested to know which pace you should buy next for your overclocking sessions, that might be quite an interesting article. They also made a small video in which they explain how to apply the pace, which is one of the critical parts. So if you want to make sure you put it right and you use the right pace, check it out. That's also on the HDRBOT front page. So easy link, just go there and quick. Cool. Uh, another, um, I wouldn't say it's too it's too interesting, but uh, we we usually browse the the internet to mm -hmm. see if we can find interesting overclocking news, and we stumbled across a uh, a workshop in Peru. Okay. Peru is if if you don't know, Peru is a country that's very close to the equator, and uh, around the equator, it's it's pretty warm. Uh, there's a whole bunch of, uh, of scientific reasons why that is. You have the Wikipedia exactly to know what's up with the temperature around the equator. But um, so yeah, Gigabyte did an OC workshop and it was mm -hmm. a, a Peruvian, uh, or I think it was an Equatorian overclocker showing off how extreme overclocking using dry ice works. Um, okay. There's a, there's a video up on, uh, uh, on, uh, on the news article linked uh, on the front page. Everything's in Spanish though, so I don't understand what he said, but it looked very yeah, cool. I've read the translation and it's mainly explaining because uh, the newspaper where the news is posted is very, um, how do you say? Uh, mainstream. Mainstream. So the explanation is how what basically overclocking is. But it's very interesting. It's cool to see. Yeah, that's for sure. Talking about Gigabyte, those guys are up <laughs> to a lot of stuff right now. And we mentioned that in the last Q&A, but now we have maybe a little bit more things to say. And it's the last hooray competition in the Z97 last hooray. So this is the last competition Supposedly, I guess, from Gigabyte on Z97 before I wonder, I wonder why something coming one. next. I wonder why <laughs> it's the last one on Z97. Is there anything spectacular coming next month? Well, we don't know, but <laughs> what is for sure is that you can win that spectacular thing if oh. you are winner of a category within the It's a mystery so. motherboard. 
it is something mystery from out of Gigabyte Motherboard Labs, uh, of course. So for this competition, uh, there's uh, two, uh, two different parts. Um, so one ambient and one extreme. So ambient is for everything that is not sub-zero, basically. And extreme is everything sub-zero, so dry ice, et cetera, et cetera. And then two, helium, why not? Um, the extreme competition is going to be XTU 4G, Geekbench, XTU 4.5G, and GPU Pi. There's right now five overclockers competing in it. Uh, competition is open since a week and a half, two weeks almost. So right now, not so much people, but it's going to come. And for the ambient one, it's going to be XTU 4G, Geekbench, XTU 4.5G, GPU Pi, which is pretty much the same one. And um, so here we have 21 overclockers already. And that was the competition the guys from Jagat Review were also highlighting at their workshop two weeks ago. So everything is kind of connected. Cool. What so, are the prizes? So there's some cash to win, 250 for each of the uh, top uh, three of the different uh, competition stages. Okay. Uh, not for all the top three, but you know, the winner of it. And then category winners for each of the competitions can also win the new coming, upcoming motherboard. Okay, cool. Um, the, speaking of prizes. Yeah. Very recently, the, the, the Road to Pro, Pro C, as well as the Challenger divisions came to an end, at least around two of them came to an end. Um, there's a, there's seven new division winners and one new Pro C winner. I don't wanna get into too much details because we are already did, a, did quite a quite a big uh, video about that as well. So um, check out the video that you find linked somewhere in this screen here or yeah. in the description below. Possibly. I think usually it appears Right Somewhere here. here. Click on my face to go to the video. Just below his <laughs> face. Anyway, um, so that's a cool competition that ended, like cool competitions. But now it's the crispy part of the summer, and that's called also the Team Cup 2015. So we're waiting for this competition since quite a while now. And since you're here, you can tell us maybe a little bit more about all the arcanes of this competition. From what I've noticed, there's like four sub-competitions, sub so called SCs. There's one for CPU, one for GPU, one for memory, and one miscellaneous, which is uh, ARM stuff, etc., etc. So there's a lot of benchmarks. Some of them have ten stages in there. What's going on with that? So that's that's pretty simple, actually. It's a it, we we have this tradition of a team cup uh, since I think 2009 or something or 2010, where the idea is that you you overclock uh, for the benefit of your entire team. So at the end of the team cup, we identify who was the best overclocking team in the past uh, the past two two and a half months um, the idea is that because the the benchmark and the hardware variety is so large you will have to work together and coordinate with your team members who will take care of that uh, mm -hmm. which 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 hardware exactly because you can't both do the Everything. latest the latest CPU as well as the old CPUs as well ARM some memory overclocking it's it's physically impossible to do everything by yourself so you need to you need to find a, an active team and like, team up and, and coordinate and okay motivate each other as well so we know uh, the novice nimble for instance for as a team competition we can relate to uh, for Novice Nimble, we have an average at the top three score of one team. How does that work for this one? Uh, it's uh, just the best score of the team will count right. in each of the stages. Okay, well, that's going to be interesting. Is there any cool prizes besides glory and eternal um, recognition by the community? Not yet, no. Okay. Well, maybe later. <laughs> maybe later. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, but here, there's another competition coming with this time a lot of prizes in terms of hardware. And this is the MSI Godlike OC tournament. So this is something that was launched today, right now. So right now. And uh, so this competition is actually very different, right? So there's um, two different parts. Again, one ambient, one extreme. And uh, for this one, uh, the hardware prices are like motherboards, graphics cards, there's some memory, there's some SSD, I even saw some Intel SSDs as well. Uh, yeah, CPUs as well, I think. Yeah, CPUs even. So a very cool competition with a lot of hardware prizes. There's no cash for this one, but it doesn't matter because if you sum up everything I saw, it's beyond 6K almost of uh, everything combined. So very interesting. Uh, Benchmark-wise, for the extreme one, we have a 32M 5G, Prime 5.5G, and GPU Pi, no limits. No limits sounds just like the MSI no limits. That's just the marketing cue, exactly. <laughs> and uh, ambient XTU, uh, HDRBot Prime, Geekbench 3 single core. So here there's no frequency limit, so I guess it's all out. Yeah, but your temperature has to be a minimum of 20 degrees centigrade. Yeah, so it's going to be the limit. Yeah. <laughs> OK, that's very cool. Um, another competition <laughs> that finishes today that we should mention? Well, today. Um, well, today. 
the, at the day of recording it finishes just yes. like at the day of recording today the MSI competition is, uh, is yeah, I starting. might edit all this within the day <laughs> be careful Go ahead. so the HSR <laughs> GLC showdown formula round 2 is finishing today uh, so far there's al almost uh, two, uh, 150 overclockers participating in this competition cool. um, currently le uh, currently uh, uh, leading the pack is an Italian overclocker whose nickname is and I'm going to write the read this uh, from the from the from the notebook, it's Elva Beccara. Oh, that's the rookie round, but you're reading oh, wrong. Sorry. It's actually ja a JAP383. Sorry, 383 <laughs> from the USA. Um, yes, so it's a American overclocker who's leading the, the round two of the OC Showdown formula, JAP383. In second place, we have Teza from Indonesia, and then in third place, uh, NVIDIA Forever 2 from France. Okay. So guys, if you watch the video right now, so probably tonight, well, you only have a few hours left or it's already too late to meet the two, those guys. So we can maybe almost congratulate them in advance, but let's reserve that for the announcement video. Um, another competition that is ending very soon, and that is the Rookie Rumble, for which you can now announce the top guy. The current leader. <laughs> He's from Italy. <laughs> and his nickname is uh, Elva Beccara. In yep. second place, there's Zeken from uh, from France, and in third place, it's Be Back to their 18 from the from the USA. So, could we say that the Rookie Rumble this time is a little bit easier than the others because there's less participants? Uh, I, I wouldn't say it's particularly it's the easier. the summer break, so yeah. less people pay attention. It's very warm in both Europe and the US right now, so... It is tough to be in a competitive overclocker in those conditions. Yeah. Global warming! Um, another competition, uh, Novice Nimble, that's ending on the same day. Uh, good, this time it's all combined. 25th of July, uh, 11 partici uh, participating teams, and this time we're actually seeing some uh, a bit of changes. Uh, Hardware.info is first right now, and uh, Hardware Ready OC is, uh, uh, Hardware Info, sorry, is second. And Hardware OC is actually, uh, Ready OC, an Italian team, is actually third. And guess who is first? With top of the points, with everything fall out, all these points. Kalkaland. Yeah, of course, again, again. So I'm not too sure uh, what the guys of Kalkaland are doing to be that good, but they're definitely uh, fully into it. But I'm sure this is related to the fact that a lot of Kalkaland guys actually won the previous Rugby Rumble, so all those good guys are right, keep on going. So yeah. Pretty active team as well. All right. Anyway, to uh, to sum up or to uh, to round up the competitions, um, the old school is best school competition. Or old school is best school round three finishes on uh, the thirty first mm -hmm. of this particular month. Uh, there's uh, fifteen teams participating, and currently the top three we see Award Fabric from Germany, Tech Sweden from yes Sweden Sweden, and Classic pl Platforms from uh, from the USA. Very interesting to see Award Fabric to the top. We haven't seen that team in quite a while, so it's good to see them back. We had Chris over here uh, from uh, from Water Brick during Computex, and he yep. was trying to reboot their team. So looks like it's uh, it's working out. That's very great. Hopefully, we will see more of them in the round four, which is ending in August thirty first. So, if you missed this one and you don't have time for the round three, just go ahead with the round four. Still months to go. So that was about it for today's <laughs> episode, I guess. Um, there's nothing else to say besides that you guys should not forget to tune in for the Q&A this Sunday, 9 p.m. Eastern time in the US. That's going to be Monday morning here, GMT plus 8, uh, 9 a.m. And uh, we will have Lucky New, editor-in-chief of JagatOC.com to talk about the Indonesian overclocking community and his plan, master plans, like this. Master plans for the future of overclocking in his country which is going to be very interesting. Until then, thanks for watching and keep pushing it.